Okay, here's yet another evolution video. As you can tell by the title, this time we're going to see how high creatures can jump. So let's get ahead and start with this simulator and create 1000 creatures. So here's 1000 creatures, you know, same stuff as before. And now we can get started. So, just to show you what's going on behind the scenes, again, like always, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step generation. So this time it looks a little bit different. Um, you can see that instead of having posts every meter horizontally, I instead have markers going up vertically, because the goal of the creatures this time is to jump as high as possible. And you might be wondering, what does it mean to jump high? Like, how do you measure jump height? Well, here's how you do it. You look at the lowest point of the creature, as in like the bottom point of the bottom node, and that's the jump height. And then over the course of 15 seconds, you see at which point that jump height is the highest, and that is considered the overall jump height. So it's kind of like the maximum of the minimums. Now, um, that's not all of it, because if you also look closely, you notice that this um, tag thing is, re is red for the first two seconds. And that's because um, in order to prevent spasms like at the beginning from counting as jumps the first two seconds don't count so in order for your jump to be legitimate it has to be in the last 13 seconds of your trial um, and that way the only way creatures will get good at jumping is by like jumping over and over again so they have to have a consistent stable reliable jump which is what i'm looking for um, so you can see that most of these creatures don't do very well and one of the big reasons for that is that the instant all nodes are touching the ground at the same time the creature is pretty much glued to the ground. There's no way to lift any node above the ground once they're all at the ground. So it's very hard, but you have seen that like some of them have been getting like two centimeters or like three centimeters, and those are the ones that are going to survive and pass on their genes, and you know how the whole thing works. Um, yeah, so we're almost done with all the creatures now, and here we go. Okay, so we can sort... Okay, yeah, so like um, this whole like little pop-up window still works. By the way, Okay, I don't know when I was going to mention this, but before I even converted the evolution simulator to work in the vertical way like it is now, I realized that I would have to fix some just overall bugs in the simulator and like just bad programming practices I was doing. One of them was when the camera was moving around, like you can see how the camera's following the creature. In the past, I had it manually modify the coordinates so that the camera was always following the creature. But that was really confusing because then if I need to now follow the creature vertically, I hadn't programmed that in and that would be confusing. So instead what I should be doing is using the translate function, which moves the entire coordinate grid, you know, like to whatever you want it to be. So that now you can say, okay, one pixel corresponds to like, you know, a big chunk or like, you know, the origin is now up here or something. And it makes it much easier to move cameras around. So I did that even before starting the jumping mechanism and all that. Um, just letting you know, I don't know why that was so important. But yeah, that just means that there was more work put into this than you thought, okay? So appreciate it. Okay, now we're gonna sort. And one thing I think is really interesting is that you get this weird like shearing motion. And it has to do with the fact that all these creatures at the bottom got zero centimeters as a jump height, as in they didn't jump at, jump at all. So like unlike the walking forward left or right movement, this is not really continuous. There's some like very clear, um, points where everyone's collecting and one of them is at zero meters. Okay, so we can see right off the bat from the first generation, our best creature jumped seven centimeters. And you can see that black line showing its current height. What? It just jumped 7.78, 8.59 centimeters. Um, hmm. That is weird. It should not be jumping higher. Okay. I, I thought I fixed that bug. That bug happened in the past, but it didn't get fixed. Okay, now... See, it's like, like a double bug, because if you look at this guy's um, video, he jumps up to 9 centimeters, or it jumps up to 9 centimeters. Its fitness is says 7, though it should be 9. And then on the, on the graph, it's going up to 6. So I'm getting like 3 different values when they should all be exactly the same. So like, what the heck? Okay, so I'm going to come back after I fix this, which is hopefully, hopefully very soon. Bye. I think I fixed both bugs now. Um, you probably don't really care why the bugs happened, but I think one of the more funny ones was, it was just a rounding error. So like, if you looked at the graph... Okay, I'll just do a quick generation this time. Um, if you looked at the graph... Okay, come on, let's go, let's go. Like here, 
Um, these are integers and like they are rounded badly so you could see them go up like 0, 2, 4 and then it would go like 5, 7, 9 and then like that's obviously wrong but I didn't notice that. But what that means it was like 5.9999, 7.9999 so the graph was actually correct. And then the other bug was kind of complicated so I won't talk about it. Um, so I changed the seed so that I get a completely different set of creatures this time. And I haven't told you this but I actually haven't gone through this evolution simulator with you know this dumping past like generation five or something so I don't know what happens long term and I guess that means you can think of it like I'm watching this as um, as surprised as you are like I don't know what's gonna happen okay, so the best creature from generation one already can jump 14.65 centimeters let's see how it does it whoa that was actually pretty cool like remember in order to jump 14.65 centimeters that means there must be one point between 2 and 15 seconds in which every single node is completely above 14.65 centimeters um, and then the median is at zero that's what I expected and for some reason the zeros show up as negative zeros but you know that's all the same thing okay, let's do another quick generation so quick generation just means that we go straight to like they've all already been measured we go straight to this grid and we can sort them now and this way like we can skip all the time wasted watching them run and we can instantly see what the best one is which is still 14.65 which means no progress was made this time I still like I'm really surprised like how delayed that jump is like it happens seven seconds into the performance so you know those 15 seconds each one of those seconds is precious a gem that you must value and then last okay so like you can see what can you see? Like right around the middle, they're already the median's already jumping because right in the middle is around two, one. Let's see what a the lowest jump that someone actually makes is. There's 0 0.01. Whoa, it's right there. Did you miss it? Well, it's not gonna jump any further because you know all the notes are on the ground. Yay. Okay. Kill 500. Reproduce. Back. So you can see the median has taken off. It's past two centimeters now. Wow, quite nice. And let's look. Oh yeah, because the last video, since I had like homologous structures, there were no species, but now I can bring species back again. Hooray! So we have species S56 here as the dominant species, and it dominates even further by generation two, taking up 242 spots. Okay, let's go on to generation three now. Ooh, a breakthrough. This one is at 16.89 centimeters by a tringle too. Oh, some of you didn't like how I called them tringles because you didn't know what a tringle was. Tringle is just short, oh there it was, that's a pretty high jump. It's just short for a triangle. And then in other news, the dominant species has moved from S56 to S45. I forget what I called them. I think S45 was the folded paper. Oh, here's a square. A square managed to jump three centimeters? That's impressive, considering that squares are quite floppy. Did you see that? Okay, yeah, you saw that. Okay, so the medians moved up to 3.89. Okay, now, now the best one's still a tringle, and it's moved up to 18.11. It's right there. They're going to hit 20 soon. I bet it's going to happen. There it is. They hit 20 with a non-triangle. To be honest, I'm really glad when a non-triangle um, creature takes the lead because triangles are frankly pretty boring so I don't want to see them. Yeah, so let's see how it does it. Whoa! That was like so sudden, I wasn't expecting it. But there it was. That. Crazy, right? Okay, let's keep going. This is after only five generations. One cool thing about this metric for fitness is that you can't go negative, so no one feels bad that they did the opposite of what they had to do. Um, yeah. Whoa, huge breakthrough. Did you see that? We went from 20.13, 20 2013, that was a year, three years ago, when I first created this evolution simulator. Small jump up to 20.77, we can watch that too. Oh, this one wasn't actually right at the beginning. I think it's cool that like in videos like this, it, it, like, it tries multiple times and each time it gets a little bit higher. Okay, it's only got three seconds left. There it was! In the last two seconds it snatched well, it didn't snatch, but it like did a better performance. Okay, so big jump from around the 20s up to 25 by ugh, a triangle. 
Well, 25 is quite high. Did you see that? I guess the lightweight of this, the lightweightness of what's what's another word for that? I guess the compactness of the triangle makes it easier to push all that weight up above 25. And I think it's interesting that the median line here, like you know, it kind of changes slope but smoothly. So like it looks like it's curving elegantly, and there's just something really nice about looking at that. Okay, we'll keep going now. Oh my gosh, I, I was not looking at the species breakdown, but triangles are taking over. I'm actually not surprised because, you know, this is, this is like an event that like spazziness, not spazziness, twitchiness is like, you know, really advantageous. So of course the twitchiest creature, the triangle is going to take over. They have 90% of the, the population now. And now they can jump 26 meters, uh, not meters, centimeters. Oh, it's moved off the platform. There it was. Not impressed. Okay, let's keep going. Wait, did, it, did I click? I guess I didn't click. Okay, let's just A-lap it. Ah! I'd like to take this awkward silence as an opportunity to say that this background music was composed by Demipixel, who called it Evo, and it's based off of the background music I used in my other Evolution Simulator videos, which is Perspectives by Kevin MacLeod. Okay, another breakthrough, but it's still by a triangle, 30 centimeters. Right there. Pretty cool. Um, and I'm really rooting for S45 to make a comeback. Okay, three big steps. So we were last at 30, and then we mo moved up to 33. See, I told you, twitchiness. Well, not, this is more than twitching. This is like a seizure. Come on, get up to 33. Where is it? Where is it? It's gonna nail it. Right there. <laughs> See, this is how you jump. You know, if you can't figure out how to get that vertical high enough, this is how you do it. So 30 to 33, then two jumps up to 36. And now we get some interesting friction colors. I feel like they should all just be really frictiony to get more grip. That was good. And then a huge jump from 36 up to 43. Okay, like this is just getting insane. Right, like I was expecting to see, you know, an, okay, there it was. An elegant, like, creature, you know, with um, finely tuned limbs, you know, frolicking in, in this, like, grass field. But instead we get these um, monstrosities. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Okay, I was waiting for one creature to pass 50 centimeters, and it just happened. So... You can see they kind of plateaued. I say plateau a lot. I'll just say they settled down. And finally one of them got to 50.34, oh my gosh, centimeters, which is half a meter. So if you round up, or if you just round it all, it's one meter, which was my goal. A one meter jump. Let's see it. It hasn't happened yet. There it was. See, like, I think it's like, you know, interesting how it's like um, stretching and squishing. It's sometimes horizontal, but then it needs to become vertical before it can really nail that jump. So like, the squishing and squashing will like rotate slowly until it gets to the right angle and then it jumps and then it gets really high. So the median is not catching up with the best and I think it's for the same reason. It's because, you know, you really got to be lucky to nail that jump and any slight modification to your body at the very beginning will drastically change how high you jump 12 seconds down the road. So I don't think this graph is going to change very much anymore. Like, it's pretty much static for the last 100 or so generations. So yeah, maybe that's it for this video. But actually, I was thinking maybe I'll redo this whole simulation, but I'll ban triangles. So as a requirement, you have to have at least four nodes. And maybe I'll also make it so that your muscles can't be too rigid, because rigid muscles are the ones that spaz out a lot, right? They have so much strength, they can like squish and squash a lot. So if I can like prevent those from existing, maybe they'll have to try something a little more interesting than just spazzing out. Yeah, so I think that's it for this simulation. We can go through the history of 225 generations, which is 15 squared. Look at that, isn't that amazing? And that stagnates. And then like you can see S45 like just barely hanging on right there, but like it's blinking in and out. 
Yeah. Okay. On to the second simulation. If I did everything correctly, then now no creatures should have fewer than four nodes. So four is now the minimum. And hopefully we'll get more interesting stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's just get started. Let's do a step-by-step -step generation so we can see our population once again. See how many nodes that one has? Crazy, right? Oh my gosh, half a centimeter, that's crazy. Okay, so since this is going to take a long time to get through all the creatures, I thought I would just talk about some stuff. So I was checking my video analytics to see, you know, who my subscribers were. And I noticed that every time I upload a 10 words of wisdom video, pretty much like every single time within a few hours, I lose like 5 to 10 subscribers. And it's like clockwork. You know, it happens every single time. So I was figuring out like, I was trying to think, why does this happen since I think most of my subscribers are BFDI fans, so that'd be right up their alley, right? But then I checked like to see which videos were bringing in the most subscribers, and it's these Evolution Simulator videos. So maybe like a lot of you viewers don't even know what BFDI or Ten Words of Wisdom is. If that's the case, you should check it out, at least one video, just to see what it is. But if you're not that type of person, and I totally get it, just realize that um, Ten Words of Wisdom Season 1, if you have no idea what that is, it doesn't matter. It's ending in 10 more video- 10 more episodes, I think. So it's like 20 more videos. So, like, in another 3 months, there will be no more of those videos. And if you're a TWOW fan, then don't fear, because my plan is maybe I'll take the Ten Words of Wisdom Season 2 videos and put them onto a new channel. Since I figure if I have, like, two fan bases kind of, like, both existing on Carry KH without much overlap. I know there is some overlap, some of you might like both. But if there's like two fan bases anyway, I might as well split up into two channels. One for 10 Words of Wisdom stuff, and one for everything else, including the Evolution Simulator stuff. So the overall message to you is, don't unsubscribe just because you see a TWOW video, because you soon will be free from this TWOW torment. It's just a matter of like three or four months before it's all over. And besides, no, no one's forcing you to click it anyway, so stop freaking out. Okay, so this time, oh no, it's not sorted yet. I'm gonna sort it. Oh my gosh, so slow. Yeah, for some reason, this animation and like this animation alone, the frame rate drops to like, what is that, like 8? Maybe even lower? When it's doing this animation, when I'm recording it using, what is it? Open broadcast or software. But like when I'm running it alone without any other programs, it runs fine. So I don't know. Okay, so our best jumper jumped 6.49 centimeters and was an S45 folded paper species. Wait, it just jumped more than... Wait, it's jumping a lot higher. What? I thought I fixed this bug. And it didn't even happen in the last one. That was... Weird. Hmm. Wait, let me see if it's happening to the other ones, too. 5.96. There's 5.96. If it jumps higher... Then this this one's also showing the bug, but it looks like that one's correct. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this guy. Saying it only jumped 6.49 centimeters. Like, look at that; it's already higher than that. Wait, maybe right? Okay. If it's exactly at 6.49, right when the timer ends, then there's a bug that's still there. Yeah, that could be it. What? Okay, wait. Let me go back and check something. Okay, I fixed it. So the bug was um, when the simulation is running real time in the actual like, video form where you actually when you can actually see the creature. There's this bug where it'll only record the jump height on a frame that's being shown. So if it's playing at like ten times speed, it'll only record every tenth frame, which is really bad. Um, so I fixed it. But that also explains why when I'm doing ASAP mode and I don't see the creatures actually doing their performances the bug doesn't happen, because in that version, it's actually recording every single frame, um, the jump height. So now, no matter what you do, it'll record the jump height every single frame, so there is no bug. So now if I do this again, then it'll work. Also, I, I changed the seed again, so we can get a new batch of creatures. Okay, step by step again. I don't know, really know why. Um, just for funsies. Except I shouldn't say funsies, because that's a dumb word. Yeah, so, you know, as the simulations get faster and faster and faster just so you can get through all a thousand in time. Um, sometimes it's running two, three, four, or five, or like, I think a thousand by the end frames. 
simulation frames per video frame. And those simulation frames, even the ones that aren't shown, need to be counted for jump height, just in case the creature manages just to make their maximum jump during one of the hidden frames. And like, I mean, that's pretty obvious, and I'm kind of ashamed of myself for like programming it so badly that that could ever happen. But you know what? Someone rushed me to get this video out today, so I was on a time limit. <gasps> it's so hard. Oh my gosh, these creatures are so bad. You know, I was actually thinking of making it so the creatures only get like five seconds to prove themselves to us. So that, um, okay, well, okay, one thing, if you're a really good jumper, you should be able to do the jump in five seconds, right? Giving someone 15 seconds to jump is kind of superfluous. And the other thing is, if, if I only, um, simulate, well, what is it, 300 frames versus 900 frames per creature, the evolution simulation will run three times faster, right? So like, instead of taking three seconds to do generation, it'll, it'll only take it one second, which is like a huge speed up. It's like optimizing without even trying, right? It's like so easy to do. Um, but I decided not to do that because I noticed a lot of creatures were making their highest jumps like after 10 seconds, like right before the time's up they make their highest jump. And I'm like, I can't shut you down, you know? You, you did such hard work and you actually succeeded, but you know, it was very late, so I had to accept it anyway. So I kept the time limit to 15 seconds. Okay, sorting time. Right, this is slow. Um, right, there's no shearing kind of thing. Oh! Oh my gosh, I just figured it out. The whole reason there was that shearing um, before was because since it was in the order the creatures were show shown in, um, all the, the creatures that like zoomed really by at like 1,000 times were all at the bottom. The ones that were like at 900 times were like in the next layer up. 800 times were in the next layer up. It was like layers of sedimentary rock and the lower you went on the list, the um, fewer and fewer frames were actually shown and recorded. So the less and less chance it actually had to um, prove itself. And so you get the shearing where like the people at the top, oh my God, that is so bad. But the people at the top, you know, get to actually have a decent jump height and the ones at the bottom all get zero. So that's what was happening. And this time, the best creature in generation one has a 10.40. So you know what? I think all the bugs are fixed now. Like, I feel like there are like three or four like weird little quirks of the program that I just didn't understand what was happening, but it wasn't, it wasn't seri serious enough for me to look into it. But they all had the same source, which is actually really cool. So like I fixed one bug and then all the bugs disappeared. Kinda, I hope. I bet another bug is lurking in there. So yeah. We get like 10.40, 9.95. These are actually all pretty consistent, right? Like, look at that. We can go down to get a faster decrease. This is so cool how it's all sorted. I mean, like, I know sorting stuff is really simple, but I just think it's, it's like so amazing that it's like a thousand numbers and they all sort instantly. I mean, like, you can just see like 8.11, 7.99, 7.95. That's just somehow really appealing to me. Okay, so this time, look at that. No species have S3 something, because I did not allow species with three nodes. So you can see it's all just S4, 4, S4, 5, S5, 5. It's, it's lovely, right? This is exactly what I wanted. Um, so the... Oh wow, look at that. The median jump height was actually above zero for the very beginning, unlike last time. Which means that I guess with more nodes, maybe... Wait, what? I feel like with more nodes, it would be harder to get them all in the air at the same time. But for some reason, this batch of creatures is better at jumping right off the bat than the creatures with fewer nodes, and I don't know why. But maybe it's just random chance too. Let's keep going. Quick generation. Okay. Sort. Wow. Impressive. The best creature- okay, so last time was 10.80. This time it bested it to 13.82. With a folded paper. S see, it hasn't- okay, there was the jump. One cool thing about doing a quick generation versus doing ASAP and then just looking at the graph is that you can actually see um, like the whole population at once, obviously, but also how many people bested last time's first place. So 10.80 was the previous, or 10.40, sorry, was the previous best, and four creatures managed, uh, five creatures managed to best it this time, which means there's a lot of avenues for improvement, right? Five creatures just randomly did better, so. Yeah, well, that's what you would expect at the beginning, anyway. Um, yeah, 
cool, cool. S45 is maintaining the plurality, but it's slipping 248 down to 221. Let's see if rising species like... What's, what species is rising? S68 can take over. Okay, S45 is still the maximum. The, the best creature hasn't changed, um, but the median's rising. It's now at 4 centimeters. Um, same old, same old stuff. The 90th percentile is rising, which means that you can now see the bottom 10 percentiles on the graph. Ooh, look at that. If you just look at the icon for the best creature, it's very geometrical, almost like a rectangle. So here we go, a lapping, and we can see stuff changing real time. Um, it looks like this best performance of like 16 something is holding on pretty strong for a while. And S45, oh, there's a breakthrough. S45 now has more than 50%, which means that it wasn't actually slipping like I said it was. And I think the S45 is the closest to a triangle in form because you can just take a triangle and add one like dangling node that is useless and now it's an S45 species even though it's really an imposter and that's probably what's going on here too. So the best jumper now jumps 23 centimeters and it's the same strategy as the triangle. Wow, I'm so impressed. Now I feel like because I added limitations on the creatures, they shouldn't be able to jump as high as last time. So last time they got to 50 something, so this time I wouldn't predict that they get to 50 this time, but we'll see what happens. I kind of like how all the nodes are different colors so you can tell them apart, and then they shuffle around so quickly but you can like keep track of all of them because they're different colors. That's quite nice. Okay, let's keep going. I was hoping this like species stacked bar chart thing at the bottom um, it would have like lots of different eras of like, you know, different creatures taking over at different times when they best each other, but that just doesn't happen. <laughs> oh wait, S44 is starting to pick up, kind of. There's S46 too. So maybe there are different eras. <gasps> this is so cool. S46 is really picking up, just like in the original um, evolution simulator. But this is, oh, whoa. Look at that breakthrough. It went from 31. To 36 that's a pretty big change but I'm really liking this s46 um, takeover you know the rebels are rising I don't know if I can call it rebels um, s46 hasn't shown up anymore yet I always like to think of s46 as like stabilizing the s45 like these nodes are like um, jiggling all over the place and we need to stabilize them with something so just add a muscle between them and now you have s46 Oh yeah, it's undeniable now. S46 is taking over. This is cool. This is cool. It's happening now. Well, look at that. S46 is now the majority. Crazy, crazy. There is something special about every node being attached to every other node. Okay, so now at generation 45, S46 now has 71% of the population. Look at that. Okay, so when we started out, I was like, oh, S45 is losing ground because it lost 2%. And then Okay, so I'm going to call generation 1 through like generation 10 or so, like, it was like anybody's game. It was no man's land. Oh, not no man's land. It's like, you know, chaos everywhere. People are trying to figure out who everyone else is. No one knows who their leaders are. But by generation 10, it was pretty clear. S45 was taking the lead. So and generation 10 to generation 28 was the um, monopoly by S45. You know, it was a very peaceful time, relative, relatively speaking because there was one leader and no one was trying to overthrow them, but then by Generation 25, there was like, you know, little uprisings happening underneath. And then Generation 25 to 45 is Orange's rapid meteor meteoric rise to victory. And then I'm guessing from like 50 on outward, it's gonna be S46 for the rest of all time, which I'm okay with. You know, I like S46, they're my friends. Oh, I never showed you what the best performance looks like, which is this, 39 centimeters by an S46 species. Wow, wow, this is like such a calm, peaceful, gentle creature, you know? I like how it does this jump early to get it out of the way. Okay, let's keep going. Also, I really like how linear, I say I really like for everything, like, 
show me anything, like whether it's linear or exponential or like logarithmic, I'll just say, oh, I really like it. But I still think it's cool how the progress of the median line looks pretty linear from here. Uh, oh, well, it's starting to slow down now, but you know. Just the fact that every single generation, creatures kind of know what to do to better themselves. Well, they don't know what to do, but random chance is pretty consistent at making them better at, in this region. Kinda. Now, if they do pass 50 centimeters, that'll be pretty cool because it means that I can restrict them in different ways and they'll still find ways to get to the same levels of performance, which is quite nice. Also, S46 is really just a web form of a tetrahedron, right? And a tetrahedron is just like a three-dimensional triangle. So S46 and S33 have a lot in common. They're like they're like cousins, I guess. Or no, they're they're like Siamese separated twins and they ended up in different dimensions, but literally different dimensions because the triangle ended up in the two-dimensional world and the tetrahedron ended up in the three-dimensional world. And this is <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. This is not true. Um I'm trying to think how this compares to the other, the first simulation. In the first simulation, they got the median up to 35 and the best up to 50. Here, the median's up to 31 or so, and the best is at 43. So, so they're only like five or so centimeters away from catching up. Okay, so at this point, S46 has 90% of the population. S58 is actually pretty high, which I'm surprised by because, like, I thought S57 would be the logical next step above S46, but that's not the case. Oh, S56. Oh no, they're back. Okay, so the best is now up at 45, and I'll show you what that looks like, which means they're only five centimeters away now from besting last time's number one creature. It was 30, but it's gonna get even higher now. There we go, 45. Nice. I give it an A+. This guy gets a C+. Where is the jump? It's coming, it's coming. It's only got four seconds left. There it was. The, the 31 centimeter jump. Wait, how high do humans jump? Do they jump like... I'm just looking like... One meter? Higher than one meter, right? I don't do jumping. It's not not my, you know, field of expertise. So uh, I'm just like looking at my desk and yeah, yeah I, I bet humans can jump like one meter. But I realize that these creatures are like tiny in comparison to us. Like they're about the size of a cat, I think. No, they're smaller. They're smaller. Like 20 centimeters. What is... Oh, that's tiny. Wait, that's like a guinea pig, right? I don't know. <laughs> but it's a very unhealthy guinea pig if it's like internal organs are like moving around at the speed of light all over the place. That's not healthy. Okay, I'm gonna keep running this until it gets to 50 centimeters, if that ever happens. I bet it's not gonna happen. Oh wow, it's 11 p.m. Am I gonna get this video out today? <gasps> I hope so. Okay, new breakthrough, they're at like 46-ish, maybe 47. So now it's just like three centimeters or so to get to 50. 50 or bust, we're gonna do it. Oh wow, if you look really closely, you can see that the S46 species... No, no, that's not S46 right there. It doesn't exist. For some reason, S46 didn't exist from the beginning. And it had to um, evolve from other species. Oh, another jump. That's like definitely in the 47s now. 47.13. These, these guys are really like push spazzing out to its limits. Wow, nice. I think it can add another 3 centimeters. That's like a 7% jump. So easy. You know you can do it. You know you can do it. Come on. Okay. I think it's really interesting that this histogram, you can see there's two peaks. And it's not just randomness because it persists generation after generation. It's like a tooth, kind of, and these are the roots. Um, I don't know. I was going to come up with an explanation for it, but I don't have an explanation, so too bad. Oh, it's kind of, like, evening out now. No, it's definitely still there. Oh, another jump. They're at 48 now, I think. No, it's probably like 47.9 or something. 
40. Oh, they are at 48. 48.05. Come on, push that black line up. Higher, higher. They're not even halfway there. Higher. There we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. It seems like all the best performing creatures do their... Oh, I think they hit 50. No, not quite. 49 something. All the best jumps happen at the very end of the 15 seconds. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Like, is is there a reason why you ha Oh, there it was. That wasn't at the beginning. Never- That wasn't at the end. It was at the beginning, so never mind. I was lying, like I always do. So... So they only have, like, a few millimeters left to go before getting to 50. So they definitely can do it. Oh, and for some reason the median is starting to pick up again. Like, for... Like... I don't know, 50 generations, they just completely stagnated, and now it's rising again? Like, what causes these things? Like, I'm thinking, like, what physical, well, not physical, actual variable on the hard drive, like, you know, flips over, so now that, now that we start rising again. And there we go, 50 centimeters, and now they're even higher. I think they're actually higher than the triangles ever got to, which is pretty crazy. Um, so let's see where they're at now. Oh! Oh my gosh, it's like 56. <laughs> I'm overreacting all the way. 56.60, oh, wow. Wow, quite nice. Wait. Let me just see, I kind of blinked. Okay, okay, cool, cool. That time I did not blink. Oh, wait, this is, is this a bug? This one's, res oh, no, no, no. It's not a bug. I was like, how come, this creature definitely is jumping in the air, so why does it say zero? But then I forgot that I only count jump height after the first two seconds have already elapsed. So, you know, this one, by the time we got to the two seconds, it was already flopping on the ground, which is, you know, essentially death. So, all my code is working correctly. Yay me. And then another thing that's happening recently is that the percentile lines are actually kind of splaying outward, which is interesting. It means that they're being more, like, volatile, risky, less consistent. And maybe that's an advantage, because I think, you know, these lines down here are starting to fall, which is interesting. Let's see if we can get, get the median up to 40 centimeters, because that's something the triangles definitely didn't do. Hmm, I think they can do it. I'm not really sure what breakthroughs are left to try, except, like, rep repositioning your nodes so that like the, the wild shakes you do are at a slightly different rotation so that you just so happen to get really vertical when you need to. So it's not really anything you can analyze, it's just, oh, now the nodes are more vertical than they were before when jumping actually happens, which it's not as, not as like, analyzable. I don't know where I was going with that. Okay, they passed 40. Hooray! This is actually much better than the last simulation. Sometimes the creatures need to be forced to get more nodes. They don't know that it benefits them so much, but it does. And look at that, they improved yet again. Now they're at like 57. Wow. I like the texture of the bottom 10 percentiles. It looks kind of like a waterfall, a waterfall kind of, and you know, here's the, the streams. Or like melting, no, it's more like melting. Yeah. Well, what was I saying with the waterfalls? It's definitely a melting... <gasps> Uh, like, wall paint, paint melting, I don't know. So it's at 58 centimeters now, and I think that's gonna about wrap it up for this tetrahedron's performance. Well, look at that. The red note is definitely the one sacrificing itself to be flung all over the place. The other three kind of stay close together, I think, and the red one is really the one pushing it all over the place. Oh wait, I think they can get to 60. I'm going to really just keep trying to get them to get higher and higher. Yeah, wow, the median... Oh, okay, they, they hit 60, like... Oh, and they, they're getting even further. Wow, look at that. Actually, the last three generations, every single one had improvements, so, like... You know, sometimes there's periods of, like, 30 generations, nothing. And then, a little bit, a little bit... But, you know, there's always, like, a long string of generations, nothing. But then it goes 58 in Generation 222. And, um, 61 in Generation 223. 63 in Generation 224. 
then six, oh, six, oh wait, no, they didn't improve in the last one, I just couldn't tell. Okay, well this is 63 centimeters now. Come on, 63, get to 63. Yeah, the red note, yep, yep, there it is. The red note is definitely like the piston that you're pushing off of, the, the pogo of the pogo stick. Okay, I don't know if the, the stick of the pogo stick is called the pogo, but you know what I mean. Just think, the entire creature, okay, wait, I lost it, but like, when it does its jump, it hasn't done its jump. There, now look at it now, that means all, like, the entire mass of this creature was above that line at some point. Isn't that so high? That's kind of crazy to think that all that mass got up there at some point, right? I'm just impressed by the jumping, you know? The jumping is better than I thought it would be. Okay, I'm not really sure what I'm waiting for because I said I was waiting for them to get their best to 50 centimeters, and then I said I was getting, waiting for them to get their median to 40 centimeters, and then I said I was waiting for them to get their best to 60 centimeters, and now I'm probably going to say I'm waiting for them to get their median up to 50 centimeters, so this just goes on forever. They just bested their best again. <laughs> Okay, so I let the simulation go out to 426 generations now, and I was waiting for it to go like 100 generations without any ma major progress, and that's what's happened. Um, so, the median got up to 55, which I'm very pleased with, and the best creature is at 72. So here's how to get, here's how to jump 72 centimeters. Wow, look at that. Impressive. Yeah, the red one is definitely the one sacrificing itself. I keep saying that. Wow, look at that, it's on top. That's a useless place to be. Wow, another good jump. But now it's completely off the charts. The wrong way. Not off the charts as an up or down, but off the charts to the side. If you want to say someone's like really wacky, you say, he's off the charts, but to the left, or something like that. Actually, that sounds dumb, don't say that. But you know what I mean, right? Like, instead of just one-dimensional, I'm thinking two-dimensional. You know, I'm one dimension ahead of everyone else. Um, yeah, I guess the, the meeting, they all look pretty similar, don't they? And yeah, the meeting creature is like this, 55, which I think is better than the best triangle out there. Come on, come on. There, there it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so I was talking with my brother and Somehow we talked, we, we got to the point of like gravity and like whether centimeters actually mean anything, you know, because it's all relative, right? And then I realized like if I wanted this to be realistic, I could have made it so that the gravitational acceleration on Earth was correct, right? So like 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, here's the thing, I actually like didn't really care about that when I first made the physics for the simulation, so it might not match at all. Actually, like, looking at it, does it even look right? I can't tell. I think gravity m might actually be slightly less on this world than on Earth. I think I'd imagine um, objects jumping that high in the real world to fall faster. I don't know. But what that means is that I guess it's not as impressive as I'm making out it out to be. If they're jumping that high on, like, the moon or Mars, it's definitely not as impressive to get 50 72 centimeters. But you know what, whatever. You know, it's not about making this an Earth clone, it's just about simulating evolution in a completely different universe, okay? So it's all fine. Yeah, so, after 426 generations, which you can see in this elegant time-lapse I'm doing, you can see them like twitch around as they refine themselves, these creatures found out how to jump really high. They can now jump over a small child, as well as a table, and a chair if the chair is low enough and you don't count the the rest at the back. What is that called? A backrest? I don't know. But they can jump over it now. Well, actually, they would need horizontal movement as well, which I didn't really... See, that one didn't get any horizontal movement in, in its jump. Um, so, like, if, if I wanted to do another simulation where they also need to get horizontal movement in the jump as well, then perhaps they could jump over a table, chair, slash child. So, that'll be for another day. So yeah, this is what I've got for how high can evolution simulator creatures jump. Thank you for making it so far through this video. This one was a really long one, I know. And if you prefer this type of content from me, instead of 10 words of wisdom, well, not instead, because I can do both, 
Let me know by liking the video, and I'll know to make more of them. The end. Oh, actually, let's just see what the creatures look like jumping up close. See, this is much bigger, so you can really um, feast your eyes on this majesty. And you get the big purple tag, which is glorious. 52 centimeters. I want higher. I guess not. That's the number of cards in a standard deck. 13 centimeters, 20, 30, 34. I like how you can see it like slowly increment its way upwards. Okay. 56. Wow, it really pushed the limits. 56. That was higher than the last one. Well, what is 56 special for? Um, I don't know. It's 8 times 7, but like, what does that mean? Uh, uh, I don't know. 54 for that one. It's not going to jump any higher. I guess not. 54 is 9 times 6. Oh, wait, wait. These are useless, un uninteresting pieces of information. Gotta come up with something more interesting. 36 is a perfect square of 6, which is the smallest perfect number. 34 is a semi-prime. 62 is... Um, also, a semi prime is also the address. Oh, actually, I shouldn't share addresses. Never mind. Pretend you didn't hear that. Okay. Well, at this point, I can't read the the numbers anymore, so don't need a don't really need a comment on them. Hooray! Yeah, and then another cool thing about doing the the slow generation is we get to see the entire population as like a field of images, which is nice because it really gives you a picture of what the variety is and diversity among the creatures. Which, you know, it gets less and less diverse as you go on. Just because they, you know, fine tune on one, the one best performing character type. So, like, they look pretty similar, right? Wow. So nice. You can see some really modified ones just by looking at the picture and seeing the ones that don't match. We're going to sort. It's going to be really slow again. I was, I was trying to figure out what they look like, and I was going to say, like, a harp. Because, you know, a harp, except without the strings in the middle, but it kind of looks like that. The general shape is there. It's not curvy, but at such a, a low resolution, that doesn't really matter. You know, the fact that you have, like, one place where it's resting on, and then it kind of, like, I don't know how to describe it. You know what? D it doesn't look like a harp. It looks like, uh, I don't know. What does this look like? A bouquet of flowers. Bouquet? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's interesting that most of the deformed looking ones are at the bottom. Actually, not so much this time. It was a lot more extreme in the original simulator. Like, you could definitely see all the bits and pieces and malformed ones at the bottom. But here, some of the malformed ones are pl placing pretty high, so that's cool. Okay, now it's the real end. This is generation 427 now. And now I say goodbye.